Well, a fine good afternoon, everyone. This is Patricia, and I am traveling for history. I'm at the Champlain Mill in Winiski, Vermont, and as you can see, I'm about to enter the Mill Museum. I did ask permission to film here, and Miriam, who is the director, granted it to me. So, anyway, as I come in, we can see, uh, I'm gonna be looking at a variety of exhibits, and I'm not reading you the signs. So you certainly feel free to pause the video, read to your heart's content, and then continue on. They do have these, um, these right here, these electronic um, doodads, since I can't think of what it's called, tabs, <laughs> uh, tablets. We can see the evolution of the mills at Winooski Falls. I actually may read these to you because they're up kind of high. I'm sure I look quite the sight because I've got my phone plugged in to my charger. But uh, so circa 1840, small scale manufacturing flourished at Winooski Falls in the 1780s with Ira Allen's dam, forges, and grist mill. Wood carting and fulling operations and an oil mill followed after the turn of the century. The flood of 1830 ravaged the area Nonetheless, in 1835, local businessmen incorporated the Burlington Woolen Mill Company, quote, to turn spindles and create a fortune, unquote, at the Lower Falls with the sawmill, machine shop, plaster mill, furnace, textile mill, which was mill number one, and boarding house. About 150 workers, many from the quote unquote best families in the area were hired. Industry had transformed. Winoshtagak, the Onion Land River of the Abnaki, into a power engine. Salmon Hole remained good fishing. Fire in 1838 destroyed a sawmill, cloth factory, paper mill, and tackle block factory over the Bur on the Burlington side. And we can see circa 1840, circa 1878, back there. Let's read about circa 1878, shall we? Sporadic mill closings accompanied expansion. Better management, new machinery, discovery of a way to remove burrs from cheap Argentine wool, and the Civil War uniform market improved Burlington Mill Company profits. After the war, indigo, indigo blue goods for police and railroad uniforms continued as a specialty along with broadcloth suitings and dress goods. Yankee farm girls lived in mill supervised boarding houses. Irish and French Canadian immigrants joined the labor force. Poles, Syrians, and others would follow. A new timber crib dam was a major improvement. The Winooski Mill Company operated a small cotton factory near the flouring mill. After a fire, they built a large stone building upstream, which was expanded in 1880 under new ownership. Mills on both sides of the river struggled through uncertain times. And that's certainly true in uh, modern times too, isn't it now? Might have a good concept, but if you don't have customers, it's just tough. All right, so let's look at the circa 1900 information. After the addition of the Colchester Merino Mill, mill number three, in 1880, Burlington Mill Company occupied 13 acres, employed 850 people, produced hosiery yarns, uniform goods, woolens, worsteds, and fine billiard cloth. Despite modernizing, the company went bankrupt in 1898. The flouring mill discontinued grinding wheat in favor of a wholesale grain, feed, and flour business. Perfection Overgator Company, located in the flouring mill, ran machines on electricity generated at the falls. Brush Swan Electric Light and Power Company, an ancestor of Green Mountain Power, operated a hydroelectric plant. Burlington Cotton Mills bought the Winooski Mill Company upstream, expanded the building, and then after a fire, built a new mill with an auxiliary steam power system. And now here it is, circa 1926. Yep, let's read about that. The American Woolen Company, a large corporation operating mills in eight states, bought the mills in Winooski in 1901. Mill number two, adjacent to the old mill, was rebuilt. A new carbonizing plant reclaimed used wool bought from rag dealers throughout the Northeast. 
the Champlain Mill, Mill Number 4, and I have a video on that I'll include in the description below, at the upper dam was completed in 1912. People downstream knew what color the dye houses were using by the color of the river. <laughs> Sorry. Smokestacks spit out showers of soot. Demand for uniform goods during World War I saved American Wool Company from foreign competition. On the river's south side, Chase Mill of Massachusetts bought Burlington Cotton Mills in 1906. Italian mill workers lived nearby. They had an Italian market and cultivated vegetable gardens along the river. Now we're at circa 1965. Looks so much different, doesn't it? It's missing a few buildings. The flood of 1927 had swept away the Iron Bridge and Upper Dam. Quote, cows and everything were flooded right through. Uh, mill number three, unquote. To relieve pressure on that building, Army engineers demolished the flowering mill. Chase Mill was sold to Green Mountain Power, which opened a hydroelectric plant in 1929. A few years later, American Wool and Company began operations in the Chase Mill. Despite World War II demands for uniform goods, the company could not survive European competition, fashion changes, silk and rayon products, and union challenges over low wages. In 1954, American Wool and Company sold out to Textron American, putting hundreds out of work. By 1956, mill operations had stopped. The next year, mill number one burned. The remaining mills were used for warehouses, a discount store, and light manufacturing. And then this is the last one in this series. This is circa 1993. During the 1970s and 80s, urban renewal buildings on East Canal Street were raised to create a parking lot. A parking lot. Broken and leaky, the glass clerestory atop mill number four was removed. Badly needed renovations began. Mills number two and three became the Woolen Mill Apartments and a health club. Mill number four, the Champlain Mill, housed shops, restaurants, and offices, and the Chase Mill rented space for offices and light manufacturing. In 1992-93, Winiski One Partnership constructed a computerized hydroelectric plant and a new dam adjacent to the 1876 Timber Crib. A fish elevator enabled salmon and steelhead trout to be trucked upriver for spawning. The Winiski River turned turbines to generate, generate electricity. The remnants of water wheels remained. Immigrants from Southeast Asia and Eastern Europe added to the diversity of Winiski's population. All right. By the way, this is a very good book. I highly recommend this. Uh, written by, uh, or excuse me, edited by Laura Crowett. Uh, she had been the museum's uh, director. Uh, I was lucky enough to win a private tour with her. Uh, gosh, I don't even know how many years ago. 15, maybe longer, uh, maybe 20 years ago. Um, Anyway, it was a fantastic tour, but she retired. She's been retired for six years now. And this is only $10. Wow, that is a heck of a deal. And this table that we are looking at, let me back up so you can see it better. Look at this substantial table. Wow, this is a cutting table from the Champlain Mill. As we continue, we can see these amazing photographs of the, uh, gosh, the kids and others who worked here. Wow, look how young. But you can see how, when I was talking about the children repairing machines when they were still running, Ugh, still running. Their small hands and all that, those tiny hands. In case you can't envision a little kid's hands. So small and barefoot, certainly. And these are uh, photographs from Lewis Hine. I mentioned him in that as well. 
And this was Lewis Hine, a social documentarian. And to thank him for some of the uh, labor laws, the children's labor laws, the child labor laws in particular, that um, hopefully put an end, some end to some children working. They weren't just working in factory mills, working on farms too. The business of government was promoting business, not regulating it. <laughs> yeah, gosh darn. And again, you can, uh, I'm not gonna read all of this to you. Miriam graciously turned off the uh, ventilating system so it'd be quieter for my uh, filming, uh, which she offered to do. So I don't want to spend a ton of time reading this, the signage to you when you are able to read it yourself by pausing the video. So this woman was a twister. Her machine reduced the diameter of wool roving for spinning into yarn. I am not a spinner. I'm domestically challenged. What can I say? But I'm pretty good at this, which is a good thing. photograph. Don't we love historic photographs? I mean, I do. If you're watching my channel, you do too. Look at this machine. Holy cow. Look at the size of that machine. I'm guessing that's a spare wheel of some sort. Oh, a spindle for the yarn. I have a friend who uses a loom. It never ceases to amaze me, the expertise of my friends. So this picture on the back wall here, so I can back up enough to take it all in. That was the weave room. Let me take a shot of the the sign for you. I mean, wow. So this is a loom. I am uh, forever interested in uh, in uh, gears and stuff. If you watch my video on uh, Fred Barrett, that sculpture of Fred Barrett working at a drill press at the Maltex building. The, the, the uh, well, he didn't work at the Maltex building. He worked at uh, the Shelburne shipyard. Uh, you would see that I took a lot of pictures of the gears is the point. I'll put a link to the description in the description below to that video. You may be interested in taking a gander at it. Ooh, we have working parts of a loom. Don't we like that? Yep. Uh, let's see. Harness. So, um, looks like this piece, where's my cane? Here we go. Looks like, um, oops, try not to hit my, uh, there we go. All right, so it looks like this piece here is called the harness. 
and then lengthwise is warp yarns. And for those who know more about weaving than I ever shall, you can feel free to uh, correct me since I know nothing. <laughs> Virtually nothing. The base of a thimble. But uh, the fact that so many folks are willing to comment on my videos, I really appreciate that. You share your expertise and knowledge with all the rest of us, especially me, since as you just said, I know nothing. So I go to museums so I can learn something. All right, back up for this. I do apologize for the Move forward a bit to get a better idea of what we're looking at here. This is a sampler of Winiski Mills fabrics. Uh, Mrs. Baker gave this sampler to her daughter, Louise Andridison of Milton, Vermont, for Christmas in the mid 1940s. Uh, it was made by Carrie Baker of Milton. Vermont from a salesman's sample pack of fabrics manufactured at Winiski Mills circa 1940. It was a gift to the Winiski Historical Society. Kind of hoping they'll be open too there across the hall here. This place looks so much different than when it was here, when it was stores. As it's bound to be since it's by way of grocery nowadays. The admission is just right here, by the way. It is free admission, although they do have a donation box. And you can certainly put your donations in there. Now, this is that layer of uh, clerestory windows. And you see those are small windows because they let in light. That's what they're for. And they're at the eave line, which is the roof line. So the more sunlight, the more hours that people could work. And wasn't that the point? Because people worked from morning sun up to sundown. So uh, winter, as you can imagine, was not the best time of year to be very productive, right? I can only imagine what uh, bosses thought about that. I hope this is a stop for, uh, for schools. This sort of reminds me of something that school kids would, would try out. Kind of looks at what the spare yarn down here, right? When you come, you want to make sure to look up, down, and sideways. There are photographs and information plaques everywhere around here. <laughs> so, uh, always want to avail yourself of this kind of information, right? We all feel that way. If you're watching my channel, you feel that way. And we see here it says, War meant profits. <sighs> always has, and uh, gosh, so, government contracts, plain weave, single color, miles of blankets, and uniform cloth. You can see this toolbox talks about uh, Pearson's Red Top Snuff, Mill Worker's Drug of Choice. Isn't that, um, isn't that some, some form of derivative of uh, tobacco? You can let me know. You can let me know. And then this is uh, Raina Clavel's toolbox, case, bars, pegs, and belt. Um, 
Mrs. Clavel started working at Winiski Mills when she was 13. Now remember what I told you in the Champlain Mill. Uh, video about kids working at the mills and how these factories and mills found them. You know, a gentleman's handshake. War and mills. Government contracts for military uniform cloth and blankets meant profits and steady work. And steady work, no doubt about it. Important. This is long before Social Security, long before uh, Medicare, long before uh, Medicaid, long before anyone gave a darn about the poor needing to earn money long before. So people had to work. Or hopefully they would they have some money either saved up or had a rich uncle. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. I love stuff like this. I wonder if it works. Shall we try? Before we try though, getting these photographs so you can read them either here or otherwise. Today's a bonanza to see yours truly in the shots. But you see, there's just, there are these um, signs everywhere. Oh, yes. It does work. You see that spinning? Well, I can, so I'm guessing you can too. How nifty is that? Oh, I love this stuff. <laughs> and if you'd like to watch uh, um, videos of abandoned buildings, like I do um, on YouTube, uh, you can see, sometimes you can see these um, belts on the, on these conveyances. You can see how that would have worked. Fascinating stuff. It took the person who constructed this, uh, Ray Sargent, 1,100 hours put this together and make it work. Wow. Just plain wow. It turns itself off automatically, by the by. Kind of knew that would be the case. This is talking about the 1876 dam, and that's what's pictured uh, right here. Uh, this dam right here uh, is an example of a 19th century timber crib construction. Uh, it still remains upstream of the dam, built in 1992 at Winiski Falls. It is one of the earliest dams using concrete as crib fill. efficient or, <laughs> or really just be a lousy instructor since I spent nearly 20 years teaching but um, <laughs> you'll note also that a variety of signs are also in French en français oui I imagine it had some that has to do with hearkening back to uh, 
to their uh, some of their employees who had come from Quebec. And not just here, but also the Queen City Cotton Company on Lake Street, where GE was, General Dynamics. Now that picture I showed you of the Army engineers, they're right here, part of that photograph. Uh, the whole photograph is right here, though. I don't usually know the people who donate things to museums, but I do know that uh, I did know Merlin Acom. When I was at work study at the Fleming Museum, uh, he worked there preparing the exhibits, and uh, his work was always precise and beautiful. He's retired from there now, but um, but still very knowledgeable and interesting person. That sign says, Rebuilding Winooski River Bridge, March to April 1928. And let me back up, take this in. Here we go. And again, I would encourage you to uh, pause the video and uh, read to your heart's content. Oh yes, that was a grist mill right there. I had pointed that out um, in the Champlain Mill video. All that remains is this um, uh, concrete uh, base at this point. Mill number one and number two and number three. I believe all three have burned down. The smokestack, remember the smokestack? I showed you in the beginning of the uh, Champlain Mill one. Maybe, maybe it's still around. Oh no, this says the woolen mill. Mill number two is the woolen mill and that is still standing. In 1850, wages per month, men $16.70, and women half that, $8.35. He gets. Wow. Wow. Mm. Also, here they have a um, a book of um, birth certificates and people. And although I would like to show you every one of these, Souvenirs of Winiski Falls, Vermont, 1840 to 1956, for mill families and other interested parties. And although, as I just said, I would love to show you this whole book, I would encourage you instead to come to the museum and take a look, see around. It 
It's such an interesting place. I mean, there are photographs all the way up the side of the wall here. Holy guacamole. Look at this stuff. Look at these machines. Look at the multiple ways you can get hurt on these things. Maimed, 